How's everybody doing? Uh, this video is just to show you how you need to think as an animator when it comes to making your characters move. Now, uh, I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is the idea of grabbing, let's say, a bottle of water. Now, uh, when we're thinking in animation terms, we have to think about the poses. So right now we're in the what is called the idle state. And uh, if you were to record this, you would think that your arms, your head, your your back, your torso, your feet are all in one position. Now that's what a pose is, right? It's like when you're thinking of posing for the camera. It's the same idea where you are or you are looking at something or someone who is posing in a position before the photo gets taken. Now that is essentially what a pose is. And that's the same thing that we're doing here is we're taking a snapshot in a moment of time, recording uh, the position of the body, the rotation of the elbow, rotation of the shoulder, uh, position of the wrist. And that's going to be our pose. So this is our first pose, idle position. Maybe the hands or fingers are touching each other. Uh, the pose number two it would be the actual act of grabbing the bottle of water. So this is pose number two. Notice how the rotation of the elbow and the rotation of the shoulder. And then pose number three could be grabbing it and then taking it over towards you. And this is pose number three. So you can see the arm has come in. This is pose number three, and this is what you would record, and this is what you would save uh, for animation terms. So the software for animation would just record that positioning in between. Right? So from pose number two to pose number three, it records that information, and that is what is called in-betweens. So that's what the software does, but you've got to tell the software what those poses are. Now, when we think about uh, a walk or a jump, I'm going to show you and demonstrate what a jump is. You have to think also in the same way of poses. So you can't see my feet, but uh, generally the same idea. Okay. Uh, a jump usually is in seven poses. Pose number one is the idle position like this. Arms are relaxed. Uh, legs are you know, on the ground. Torso also in a relaxed position. Uh, pose number two is, what would you think? You're not already in the air, but you have to compress your body to create the anticipation of that movement. So what happens in compression? Well, you are most likely going to bend your knees, your, your back moves forward, your arms go down. Depending on the type of jump, right? Whether you're jumping because you see a snake or you're jumping because you are ready to do a volleyball uh, spike, jump into the air. It really depends on the motivation of that movement, but we're not really concerned about that right now. We're just talking about poses. So pose number two is knees bent, torso down. Pose number three, okay, is called the stretch position. So squash, stretch. Stretch would be that your your feet can't really see it, but I'm on my tippy toes. So you're in stretch position. Most likely your arms are up in the air like this. That's pose number three. Pose number four is you're in the air. Okay. And it can be whatever movement uh, that is motivating the character to be in the air in the first place. So it could be, again, because you're happy, because you won the lottery, or because you're doing some sort of athletic move in playing a sport. Whatever the case is, that is the uh, fourth pose. So for me, it'll be maybe something like this. <laughs> All right, so you can see that legs are in the air, and that's my fourth pose. Uh, the fifth pose is contacting the ground. Okay, so again, my, I'm on my tippy toes contacting the ground. My arms are about to catch myself in case I fall. Okay, so pose number six, okay, is uh, the absorption of energy. So after we go from pose number five with our tippy toes uh, touching the ground, contacting the ground, we then need to absorb that energy, okay? Now, if you don't absorb the energy, uh, you probably your knees will probably break, right? Your legs will probably break. Okay, so we're going to squash and stretch, continue that. And so we're going to squash down, absorbing that energy from gravity, all right, into our knees, into our body, and our toes, so our knees are dropping down. And then we'll go to back to idle position, which is pose number seven. So that is, in a nutshell, how you think about poses uh, when you are animating. And so you take these poses. It's better to write them down or maybe draw little sketches of those poses before you start animating, because then you don't want to confuse yourself uh, by having keyframes in all different places, right? So each pose is a series of keyframes. So you have maybe six or seven body parts, and then those six or seven body parts have a pose of keyframes for each of those poses. Now, what's the tricky thing is timing. We didn't talk about this. So usually, generally speaking, every five frames, you have a keyframe. 
And then maybe you want to hold this pose. You could hold it for five frames or hold it for 10 frames before you move on to the next pose. So as you as you start to do this, you'll start to understand that, okay, maybe on pose, on pose number two, which is the squash, you want it to hold for 10 frames. So you have a keyframe, okay, that defines that on frame 10. And then to hold it, you just copy and paste those keyframes on frame 20. So you have a 10 frame hold before you move on to the next uh, pose. Hope that makes sense. Uh, give it a try. If you think of it this way, uh, you'll be able to animate a lot better. But remember that timing is usually every five frames. If you get really, really good and technical and more advanced, then it's gonna be three every eight frames. But for now, stick with five, see how it feels and move the slider, uh, those keyframes as you need to. All right, so have fun, happy animating.